guys, it's Andrew from the blog Pine and Prospect Home and today I want to share our simple Christmas mantle with you today. I shared a fun little reel over on Instagram I think last week just kind of giving a little sneak peek of our Christmas mantle and I had some questions uh, that came in about uh, the garland and how I hung it and so I thought it would be fun to put a blog post together and kind of share with you guys uh, the process and how I created this uh, beautiful garland that you see behind me and just kind of share with you step by step what I did and how I hung it. So if you are new here, um, back earlier this year, I want to say, man, I don't even remember, it was early spring. We tore out our existing mantle and we replaced it with this gorgeous reclaimed uh, 100 year old barn beam that I found on Facebook Marketplace for 60 bucks is what we paid for it. It was the perfect length absolutely gorgeous. I love the detail of it and it fit perfectly above our stone fireplace and I have a whole blog post about our air stone fireplace. I actually did most of it myself believe it or not. My husband helped um, but once he kind of showed me how to do it it was so simple to do. I practically finished the entire fireplace the following day while he was at work. I'm a very stubborn, <laughs> determined woman at times and sometimes I can be impatient and so really it was very simple and I did a lot of it myself so I do have a blog post all about that if you want to check it out. But this beam fit beautifully above our fireplace and we just love the way that it looks. Well, what makes our mantle a little bit unique is that we actually decided to put our television above our fireplace, uh, I wanna say four or five years ago now. My husband built uh, these beautiful built-ins that uh, I'm sitting on right now and then the cabinet above the fireplace and also the shelves on the other side of the fireplace. So I drew up this sketch for him he created it, he made it happen. And so in order to open up those cabinet doors in order to watch TV, you can't really lay anything on the mantle. And let me just say, we actually canceled our cable uh, earlier this year. We just, we don't watch a lot of television, but during the Christmas season, I must admit, I love watching Christmas movies. It's one of my favorite things to do. I was joking around with my mom and sisters this past weekend that I should put together a video on all of my favorite Christmas movies. Clean, feel good movies. There are so many old ones, old classics. And anyways, I'm, I'm still playing around with that idea. If you're interested in a little movie roundup, let me know <laughs> because I think it would be a fun blog post. But anyways, we definitely want to keep our mantle clear so that we can open up those doors and watch some Christmas movies um, during the holidays. So I had to get a little bit creative and hang my garland rather than on top of the mantle like most people do, hang it underneath of our mantle. And it makes it a little bit tricky, but I've done it for a couple of years now and I've finally figured out the best way to hang a garland like this. So the first thing I started with were some small little gold um, cup hooks, I believe they're called, and I just screwed them right into the wood, right into the, um, the barn beam, uh, and that's what I used to hold my main garland, which is a cedar garland. I grabbed it at Marshall's three years ago, and it's something that I splurged a little bit on. I'll admit, garland is so expensive. Expensive. It really is. And one thing that I like to do, um, just to encourage you, I remember when I fell in love with cedar garland. I love the look of it, but it is so pricey. And I just decided four or five years ago that um, rather than spending a ton of money in one year and buying literally hundreds of dollars worth of garland, I'm just going to buy a little bit every single year. And I started doing that um, five years ago now, and every year I'll buy one or two more cedar garlands. And um, eventually, my hope is that <laughs> I will have all of the beautiful cedar garland that I would love to have throughout my house. So don't get discouraged when you see cedar garland all over my home. It's been something that I've been collecting for, like I said, four or five years now. I just buy a little bit every year. And if you start to do that, eventually, um, eventually you'll have enough for your for your entire home if you love the look of cedar as much as I do. Now I like to clip fresh cedar as well and tuck it all over my home and even tuck it into the faux garland. 
It just adds this beautiful smell and this old-fashioned feel. So I'll talk about that later on as well. But for this garland, everything you see behind me is faux. And I started off, like I said, with a cedar garland that I got at Marshall's. It was $39.99. I really splurged. You guys know how cheap I am. You know how much I like to save money. I have never bought garland that expensive before. And still to this day, I have not spent that much on garland. The other cedar garlands that I have are a little bit more skimpy. Um, I spent a lot less on them. And like I said, I'll tuck some real cedar into them to make them more full. But since this was the garland that was going to be on my fireplace year after year, it's a focal point in my home. We sit here on the couch, we enjoy looking at the tree, uh, watching Christmas movies. I mean, this was an important investment piece. And so as much as I love to thrift and to save money, um, I definitely spent a little bit more on this than what I normally like to. So. Um, it actually came with little red berries, and I used those the first year that I hung it, but uh, last year I think I decided to clip those off. I saved them in case I ever want to pull red into my decor again. Um, but I stuck with neutrals again this year. It's what I really seem to be drawn towards. And that was sort of the, the base, if you will, for my garland. And from there, I just started to tuck in different things. You may have noticed that my garland is a little bit asymmetrical. It sort of tapers off, as you see behind me, and trickles down. I don't quite start it on the very end of my mantle. Uh, I, I kind of like for it to be hanging down on this side. And the reason for that is because I hang my stockings on the other side. So it's sort of the two balance each other out. The stockings balance well with this sort of uh, drooping garland over on this side. Another perk to having it droop down like this is that you can hide the wires behind it. So if you have it sort of tapering down, you can tuck all the wires in and really, um, I'll give you a little sneak peek here, you can have the, the tip of that garland almost right up against the wall so that you have very little extension cord showing. And then you'll see that I tucked the extension cord, the rest of it, right behind my stone fireplace. And there's a pillow behind me, which is perfect because that hides the rest of it. But that, that's the reason why I have it sort of drooping down like I do. So after hanging the cedar, the next thing I like to add are some little pine uh, picks, I guess is what you would call them, that I got at Hobby Lobby one year. I love that they look like, first of all, real pine. And I also like that they just sort of beef up the garland. And uh, you'll just see them tucked right behind. And I just sort of bend the wire and, and tuck it right over the cedar garland. And then after doing that, I took a few different variations of eucalyptus. The darker green eucalyptus that I used uh, was sent to me by a special small shop. So I can't link that for you. But the lighter variety, I see that all the time. I've seen it at Joann's, I've seen it at Hobby Lobby. So I just stuck little pieces of eucalyptus here and there. Really, I looked for pockets where it was sort of empty feeling, uh, where the cedar looked a little bit sparse. And so I would stick the eucalyptus in there. And I like to sort of stick it into the garland um, and then behind the garland as well so that it really just gives it dimension and movement. And um, the very last thing I did, which by the way, I should have mentioned before adding the eucalyptus, I, I strung my lights throughout the garland. So I think that's important before adding all of your extras, um, put the lights in first and that way you can hide a lot of the cord with these little extras that you add into your garland. So that's what I did. And once the lights were all strung, that's when I started to add the eucalyptus. And the final element that I added were these beautiful picks uh, from Joann's, I want to say. I got them there. Um, and they just have these beautiful little sparkly white berries. And I, I love that, that pop of white. And so I just stuck those, again, um, sort of in random places and uh, wherever I just wanted that little pop of white. And both the eucalyptus and the berries, I didn't wire them in or use floral tape or anything. You can literally just shove them into the garland and they stay put and, and they, don't, they don't really move all season long. And so that's about it. That's how I've created this beautiful Christmas mantle. I think it looks so beautiful this year with 
the Reclaim Barn Beam mantle. I just, I love the combination of the stone and the greenery and the wood. Um, it just looks so, so cozy to me and I really like the way it came together. If you have any questions or if there's something that I missed, uh, please let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. And I can't wait to share the rest of our home with you. There's just a few more things that I have to finish up here and I'm just so excited to share it all. I, I just love Christmas so much. It's one of my favorite times of the year. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you are new to my channel, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.